Hello everyone, welcome to the session on configuring Apache server. Today we will do a exercise on configuring Apache in Linux. So before we head into it, we will first uh, understand what Apache server is and what it means. Like uh, you might have visited websites, you open google.com, amazon.com or even intellipad.com all these websites are hosted on a server called Apache. Normally, if they are based on Linux, they might be hosted on Apache or Nginx. These are web servers. Web servers host websites so that you can access them using your computer browser or over browser on your mobile phones. So Apache server can store a lots of websites and web pages so that you can uh, access them. Now that you are a Linux system admin and learning Linux, you should know how to install and configure Apache so that you can host your own or your company's website and take care of it. So Apache is a very strong and robust web server. Before we go on and understand how to deploy Apache, let us first know the agenda for today's class. So first of all, we have to understand what Apache server is. So Apache is a web server and it uh, helps you deploy your web pages or web applications and people can access it. So Apache can already handle multiple hundreds of applications uh, or hundreds of threads and hundreds of user footprints and show them the same website. And then once that is done, you can deploy Apache in Linux once you understand what Apache is and then we will do a hands-on lab in which we will deploy Apache from scratch we will, we will uh, bring the package install it and then inside it will make configuration changes then we'll write a short uh, simple uh, web page code uh, just a few lines uh, in HTML and then check whether that one is getting displayed or, or not in our web server so that is the agenda and once all this are done we'll discuss what's next and what else we can explore in our linux courses so let's get going so first of all what is apache apache is the community in uh, the world of linux who have developed a lot of interesting projects okay so apache web server is one of those interesting projects Apart from that, there is Apache Hadoop, which is uh, used for handling big data uh, for large uh, amount of uh, data manipulations. And uh, here we are concerned with today is uh, the Apache web server. So web server hosts, uh, hosts websites on the internet. What do we mean by hosts? That means, uh, host means uh, to serve website like a website should be placed in certain server and it should be able to handle it that is called hosting a website so apache is a server which handles the web pages the website may be written in plain html or another uh, language called php or python or uh, java but it needs a website in order to publish itself so these languages uh, are supported by apache and uh, the Apache web server hosts these websites. And the good news is Apache is an open source web server, so you can download it for free and use it uh, as long as you adhere to its open source licensing. So once that is um, done, then we can uh, check and deploy and then uh, install a web server. So here, uh, let's get a brief uh, note of history of Apache. This web server was released in 1995, so a lot of time, around uh, more than 20 years have passed since the server is in business and still it is going strong and uh, is one of the leading web servers that are being used. As of 2010, the stats appeared that said that uh, around 60% of all websites and 66% of the busiest websites who have more than a million fo footprint use Apache and nowadays uh, there is another web server called Nginx which is catching up but not so fast because 
Apache is still the most robust and the most used website and most uh, web server pardon and is the most reliable one so now let's do a hands-on and check out whether uh, how we can install Apache web server on Linux and uh, we will also write the HTML page and then uh, publish a simple website okay so let's get going for the lab I have created a simple uh, Linux system which has an IP address of uh, 192.168.0.10 I have used VirtualBox to install the system and uh, I have also used CentOS 7 the latest version because we are basing our course on Red Hat Linux and since CentOS is the open source clone of Red Hat so we are using CentOS 7 the latest version you can check that out by doing this command etc red hat release that shows the version we are using CentOS release 7.2 so that is it our IP address is uh, 192.168.1.10 and uh, 0.10 pardon and this is the release we will need this information when we need to open up the site which we create in the browser so first command to install apache is yum install httpd once we do that the apache would be downloaded from the internet you should have a working internet connection of your on your virtual box and then the, that would be installed so first what do we see the apache package name is httpd the architecture is 8664 what does that mean x86 means it's an intel processor and 64 bit processor and the operating system is 64 bit as well and this is the version of apache the latest one 2.4.6 and it is uh, built for enterprise linux 7 that is uh, for centos and uh, here it is being sourced from the updates repository and the size is 2.7 mb if we press yes then what happens the Apache RPM is getting downloaded and once that download is complete we would be able to then uh, install it now the installation is completed as well so now we are good to configure Apache so in order to configure Apache we go to another file which is created inside etc normally the etc directory is uh, a store for the configs for different packages so Apache is no exception it also creates its config directory inside httpd and uh, here only the settings and configurations are stored Apache stores it code in another directory which is called the root directory it is in var www.html so now first of all we have to go to the config so it's in etc httpd conf and inside it there is another file called httpd.conf so this one is the configuration file for apache there are lots of settings in it but for our uh, interest we have this setting etc httpd for the conf files if you want to store the configuration files elsewhere then you have to keep them there and change this setting we don't want to do that because that's the default and we are using etc httpd as the default location that location is also called the server root you have to remember this this is server root means it contains the configuration files of the server and then we have another important directive here called listen listen directive is uh, one which uh, allows you to assign the port in which the Apache daemon would listen to that means when requests come in through the network meant for the Apache web server here that would be entering through port 80 into this computer and port 80 is the default port for Apache so if you want to make it listen on some other port you can change this but mostly we prefer to keep it port 80 because that is the default port in which various browsers try to connect to Apache web server so apart from that here are some other directives like include conf modules here you can add additional configurations and additional module configurations like say you want to install PHP and want to have a website based on PHP so in that case you have to have certain settings related to Apache PHP module 
So that can be included in one of the files which you store in etc httpd conf.modules.d this directory and inside it you can name the file php.conf. So here it is star.conf that means any file which is named anything.conf will be included in this global configuration file. So these are the some important settings. Apart from that user and group Apache that means these Apache user is responsible for starting and stopping the daemon. Server admin here you can change your own e and put your own email address because if anything goes wrong uh, on the server, the server will send alerts to this uh, email if uh, postfix of course is working in your server. We'll do postfix mail server configuration in one of our separate sessions. So here uh, I'm putting my uh, address, uh, my address uh, support at intellipat.com so that if something goes wrong it comes to our support address so that we know the server is correct, uh, correctly configured or there is some error in it. This is an important option, document rule. This is very important because this is the location where we store the HTML files or the PHP files or any code related to website that should be stored here. Because when a browser opens up a page, it looks for a page from here. Okay, from this location of the server, the web pages are served. So this is important. This is the document rule. If this does not exist the web server won't be able to serve any web pages so this is important one apart from that there is another important option called directory index that would be somewhere down this file or you can search that option as well if you press escape in vi you get back to the search mode from here you can press a slash and then write what you are searching for we are searching for directory index then we press enter we directly go to the word which shows directory index so here what does it show directory index sets the file that Apache will serve it if it is requested so here directory index is index.html what does that mean as I said when we open a website in a browser it goes to a certain location var www.html there it searches for name of a certain file that file is index.html that means if a website has index.html in it then it would be able to serve okay it would be able to serve uh, the web page so similarly if you are writing your code in php or python then you can change this to index.py for python or index.php so it would look for that code in that location. So these are the changes we make. There were other settings as well, but uh, you have to go in into detail and uh, to understand that. Now, since we are setting a basic Apache server, this is enough of setting to get it work. Apart from that, uh, if you have a firewall, you have to allow port 80 for the firewall. Let us see if IP table firewall is loaded here or not yes it is there so I'll need to flush the rules so that we don't have any obstruction so it allows all the ports now now we will go on and start Apache in order to start Apache we have a command system CTL start HTTPT so that starts the service we can check whether it started successfully or not. So we have system CTL status HTTPD that shows the service is active and running. So that is good. And we can also check whether it listens at port 80 or not. As we said, listen 80 in the config file. For that, we have another command netstat tulpn. Once we do that, we find that uh, our server is listening on a lot of ports. And one amongst them is port 80 so it's listening at port 80 the daemon name is HTTPD and here is the PID or the process ID so this is fine now we can open the uh, website but 
before that we have to keep a file in the document root so let's go to the document root first www.html cd var www.html this is the document root now if we do a listing here we would see there is nothing inside it because we haven't kept any code now if we don't keep any code and this uh, website doesn't have the directory index or the index.html file it would not open up so first of all we have to keep uh, index.html in order to for the site to open up properly so here we write uh, demo html code just to label this website so we write this we could center so that it's a line in the center and we write welcome to IntelliPaths Linux sessions so we do this and we close the HTML tag the center tag and finally the HTML tag HTML in itself is a vast course and uh, you can do that separately and we have lots of courses on design web design as well so here it is a sample uh, page index.html is ready now if we go back and open this page via browser we should be able to uh, view it so let's open up so IP address or server is 192.168.0.10 now if our website is up and running fine then it should show up the page so let me press enter yes we are fine so this page welcome to IntelliPatch Linux session is showing up that means our Apache server is uh, fine good enough and running so that was the lab you should practice it once again um, and uh, and do it a couple of times in order to understand how it is working and uh, how to troubleshoot if there are uh, certain issues here uh, once you're done with this exercise what we can do next is we can uh, install a lamp stack which comprises of linux apache mysql and php these four are a combination of languages php is the language mysql is the database apache is the web server you can use this in combination to create a full-fledged complete website if you want to use lamp that means nginx in uh, place of apache you can use that too and uh, apache tomcat is for those who use java based websites virtual hosts we can configure this in apache in order to host multiple websites on the same ip address in the same server so that is it and then we have the multi-tier apache where uh, we can uh, host uh, apache based website on multiple servers when the uh, number of hits are many like uh, millions of people are hitting a website like websites like uh, facebook or google they should have uh, millions of users uh, hitting them every second so in order to handle such a traffic a single apache or nginx web server is not sufficient so for that we have multi-tier apache that means the same website would be running over multiple systems and how apache handles that that's the catch so we can discuss that as well and we will also discuss high availability that is a very interesting topic uh, related to apache that uh, you say you have three servers and two of them die but still uh, Apache serves the website so that is how uh, all these settings work so thank you for your time you practice this Apache tutorial once again so that you get a hands-on